runaway diesel myth busting, I guess. I don't know. I don't know whether we're going to myth bust or we're not going to myth bust. That's the point of this. What we have here is a dirty old Kia van. Now, this poor old thing has had a bit of a hard life. The body and the rest of it had it mechanically or engine wise, I should say. It's pretty good. So the engine still runs, however, we've lost the keys for it and it's got an immobiliser. So we've had to do some creative things to get this thing to, well, still steer without a steering lock and get the engine to run. There's a few extra wires we've got running across it and we basically could fire it up and make it run just as it should without all the ignition. We've hot it. Let's put it simple. But diesel fails. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I came across a YouTube clip or video and it was five best diesel fails, all right? It was a really popular clip. It's about vehicles that are what they call running away. So they're running flat out. You can't turn them off. Often they're on the side of the road. People are walking away going, what do I do? And this is pretty good viewing. It's, it's pretty, it's confronting stuff because you see a diesel and you can't do anything about it. And it's eventually just going to blow itself to pieces. There's a lot of comments on these. As you can see, there's a lot of comments running through here about diesel fails and how to stop them. Put a rag, a fire extinguisher, put it in gear. So we thought, we've got this old thing, why don't we give it a myth-busting stab? Now we don't really know, alright, so we're not saying that we're the experts on this. What we're saying is, let's give it a go and see what actually works to shut down a runaway diesel. But first, let's explain what a runaway diesel actually is and how it comes about. Well, one of the reasons, alright, so let's take a look. Alright, well let's explain what happens to a runaway diesel. Now there's several reasons. Um, modern diesels have a lot of uh, other sensors and computer systems in them so there can be a lot of other reasons why runaway diesels happen. However, we're going to talk about basic old mechanical diesel systems like this old van we're using as the test here, the test subject. Now a lot of runaway diesels happen and it's got a lot to do with the turbo. Okay, Here is a turbo here, this is a turbo and the exhaust manifold off a Land Rover Discovery. It's actually mine. So. Here's the turbo here, it simply uses exhaust gas that's coming out quickly out of the engine and it exhausts through here and continues out the back of the car like you'd normally expect. However, inside here, before it gets out of the exhaust, there is a little turbine here, sort of like a little vacuum cleaner. Really. And this is the turbine here, alright? So this is the turbine system. And this is a cartridge out at the centre of it. Now what you'll notice is that the cartridge, in this case, is actually faulty and there's an awful lot of play in the centre here. So you notice that the, the, uh, the turbine has a lot of play in it, and that's where the issue is. So what actually happens is air or exhaust gas comes in through the turbo and it turns this little turbine here, turns it really quickly, very very fast. The speed of this is ridiculous. So it's turning this very quickly. To do so it needs a lot of lubrication. So oil is pumped in through this part here of the uh, turbo cartridge itself high pressure from the engine, so under full pressure, and it runs out the back here, all sort of foamy and damaged, or sort of da not damaged, but foamy and all sort of churned up because it's going through at such high speed. What actually happens when this turbo starts to wear, as you can see it's got a lot of wear in this, the little seals in there cannot account for the amount of play in the shaft, so the oil starts to leak out, and it often leaks out into the intake, which is this side here. So as it's leaking into the intake, then of course the whole point of this is on the side it gets blown into the engine and that starts to feed the engine. And that's really what uh, comes about, is that the engine starts to run on its own oil. That's quite, that's relatively common, especially in larger vehicles. That is one of the causes. There are other causes, but that is one of the leading causes is on a turbocharged vehicle, the seals go, and that could, have, could well have happened on our Land Rover Discovery when we noticed it was smoking quite a bit and discovered that it was actually the turbocharger. So that was replaced, smoking stopped. We were probably quite close to a runaway diesel. Now, the van behind us that we're using as a test subject isn't a turbo. So it's, it's less likely for this vehicle to have a runaway diesel problem. However, the rest of the engine is the same. So we're gonna use this van as a test example, um, but bear in mind it's not a, a turbo. That has no effect on stopping it. What we're doing to test it and stop it has basically no effect on it. What ends up being blown into the engine, we blow it in, we stop the airflow, all the same things happen, so we're not going to get into a, it's not exactly the same as other vehicles. Now we're also doing a test on a manual. If you have an automatic vehicle, you can't do one of the tests that we're doing here to stall it, which is put it in gear. Okay, we have four things we're going to give a try, right? We're going to test out. 
One of the theories is put it in a high gear. Okay, so the engine's revving high, we'll put it in a high gear and see if we can stall it. We'll give that a go. Uh, one of the other ones is a rag. One of the myths is put a rag in the intake manifold and that should stop it, or over it. Over the intake manifold and that should stop it. Okay, so it's, it's, it's meant to snuff the air. Being a fire, which is what an engine is, it's simply internal combustion, it's combustion. It needs fuel, which is diesel or petrol, but in this case diesel, and air. So snuff the air with a rag. The other one is because you're snuffing air, is to use a fire extinguisher, which we have here. Now this fire extinguisher is new, and as you can tell, it's still full. So we're gonna give this a go, all right? So we put the fire extinguisher, hey, we'll empty the whole thing and see what it does, all right? The other one, of course, which we believe is probably the safest, if you can take the intake hose off, which we need to do for this anyway, is to put a block of wood or something solid over the intake to actually snuff it. We are dubious about the rag because we think it'll get sucked in, but we're going to give it a go, all right? So we're going to test the myths of runaway diesel fails, okay? Let's give it a go. So we'll give it a go, and I'll just put it in gear, all right? Yeah. Now, you got the lights right in front. Well, I'm going to use the brake. Oh, hang on. Can you... Yeah. Contact. Give it some... Give it some spray. Oh, sorry. I'll just leave that off. Yeah. So let the clutch out. We'll see if we can get a few higher revs, actually. All right? Okay. Yep. Well, that was pretty high. That was pretty high. So that, that, geez, that's loud. Holy shit. All right. So that one we don't need to do anymore. Okay. Well, stalling seems to work. Um, so you want to do that block of steel? Oh, you want me to get a block of wood? What about a, what about a phone book? Because you might have it in the car. I mean, no, not these days. Mm, clutches a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Well, we just, uh, I'll move the camera. I've got a block of wood here. Okay. Here's, here's one I prepared earlier. All right. Block of wood? Block of wood. Block of wood test. Test number two. Or if you're a carpenter. Oh, I'll turn it on. We're going. Yeah. You can't get a perfect seal on it. Turns out, block of wood is unlikely to do it. Kill it. All right. Well, block of wood, we had to kill that. Yeah. Well, it's smoking a fair bit. Jesus Christ, it's filled the shit up. Thought, I like, thought that you would seal it off. Yeah, I thought it would seal it off enough to kill it. Um, extinguisher. Right. Would you want to? <laughs> <laughs> would you want to put the hose on it? So, no, no. Get, get back a bit. No, no, I'll go there. We're going to fill the hole, like the cameras can take this. They're going to. Well, you're going to go near it. Or Last gonna... time I had a fire in a car, I had to use this one. Yeah, I remember that. Well, what? Yeah, it was a fan too. <laughs> um, if you use the hose, put it out a bit, the intake hose, you can put it straight down. Oh, well, I can just go straight in there, like that, perfect angle. Well, go like that. That's what I'm thinking. What do you reckon? I'd rather go in there because you've got electrics there and shit like that. Who cares? Let's take one. And I have to stand near it with the accelerator. I might use a stick. Hang on. Oh. 
Yeah, all right. I've got a face pretty for camera, remember? Yeah. You should be on radio. I should be on radio. <laughs> <laughs> all right. of our diesel fail test, how to stop a runaway diesel engine. I don't know whether we're going to succeed at this. This, this. We didn't get to test one of the things we want to test, which is the rag, of course, but we did test several of them. Now, if you have a manual, it appears that high gear, letting the clutch out, will stop the engine. It didn't seem to struggle. In fact, we did it twice, and the clutch was still there. You may burn your clutch out, you may not have a clutch at the end of it, but you may still have an engine. Either way, you can let it run away, or you can try that. But that seemed to succeed for a manual. With an auto, we're not so sure, really. The test is pretty inconclusive. We did try the big block of wood. Now, the block of wood did, t did tend to seal relatively well, but the engine still managed to, to suck air through various areas, probably through the filler cap, also through the breather on top of the rocker cover, it was it was sucking through there. It managed, put it this way, it managed to get air enough to not kill it. So as soon as we took the wood away, it ran away again. Now we're trying to do this test to simulate things you may have around, okay? So bear that in mind. We're trying to do a test of things you may or are likely to have around that aren't too weird, okay? We don't do want to do a weirdo test where you need some strange thing you're never going to have in your car. So the block of wood could have been simulated if, it, you had a, if your vehicle was a camper or you had a picnic basket in the back for, say, a dinner plate. It's nice and solid. If you put it over gently, there's a lot of strength, particularly in a small area, on a porcelain plate. But equally, you may have a plastic plate around, and that would have done the same job. So the block of wood could have been simulated for various other solid items, a brick even, on the side of the road provided it wasn't too porous. But at the end of the day, it didn't work, really, it didn't. So, the fire extinguisher. Now, we used a dry powder one. There's a lot of talk about using CO2, and that's true. However, I have to say that we used this, and we didn't think a lot about it. I grabbed this extinguisher out of my caravan. This is the extinguisher recommended for my caravan, so I grabbed it, and then we thought, hey, dry powder, okay, clearly it caused some engine damage. However, this is a commonly available extinguisher, and that's the key. That is really the key to this. This extinguisher is commonly available. So in a caravan, it's used for rubbish, fuel, and electrical fires. That's the sort of thing you have in a caravan or a vehicle is for these fires. You might not have a different type of extinguisher. So this is a commonly available. We grabbed it. It was 25 bucks or something. That's what we used, okay? So that's why we used this. Now, the engine didn't survive that. It didn't like it was blown in, it's clearly the powder didn't want to compress. Being a diesel, there's not a lot of room in top there, so it didn't want to compress. Very similar to the snorkel test where the water didn't compress inside the engine. So we want to take a look inside. But we have to say that we didn't get to test the rag. I don't think the rag would have worked. Okay, let's nail it. Work it out. Simple. If a block of wood, which isn't porous, wouldn't seal over there, then a rag, which is porous, would have let way too much air in. So the rag wouldn't have worked if we held it over. If we put the rag inside it, it simply would have sucked it inside the engine. And you can see the result of the powder in the engine. So we don't think that the rag test would have worked anyway. Could we have tried it? <laughs> which one do you do first? If you do something that wrecks an engine, you can't go through and test something else afterwards. So I'm afraid we're in this position. But I think we need to complete the test, pop the head off, and take a wee look inside. Expected, the powder is created quite 
an issue on top of the cylinder. It's compressed, it's completely solid. It's actually in solid blocks of it. Look at that. That is the powder from the extinguisher. I'm trying to compress. So basically, the powder's no good. So extinguisher will work in some cases. Dry powder in a diesel, not gonna work. Might work in a petrol, but then the problem isn't gonna occur in a petrol. So there we go. Basically, as far as stopping a diesel, manual, put it in gear, auto, it's up to you. See how you go.